from the Ugly Parrot Studios in Newcastle, California. I forgot the rest of this shit, but now... Uh, you had a good start. I dude. know I did. And that's the one we're using. <laughs> one more time. From the Ugly Parrot Studios in Newcastle, California, the Loom Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Scott Robinson with you for another episode of Beyond the Humidor. Uh, I've got the three of my friends here doing the show. I'm including you, Camera Gorilla, and we have our new, I think he's going to be our residential permanent guest, Bucky the Beaver. Our new mascot? Our mascot, thank you. Yes. What did I say? Resident permanent guest. permanent guest. Yeah, residential permanent guest. What a mascot. I like, okay, mascot works. The helpful beaver. Nice. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when the Waffle House, Walmart, and Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel gets into a menage a trois. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a visual. Oh, uh, for the record, I, I, I love up. this fucking place. I think I threw up my mouth a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. That's all right. I fucked the joke up anyway. How you doing, Larry? Oh, you know, just uh, almost fabulous. It, it, yeah, that's God bless that beaver. That's all I can say. How about you, Greg? How you doing? You know, after a fairly shitty start to my week so far, I- I'm looking forward to some good stories, good cigars, and having a good time. Right. Oh, yeah, we should be able to screw that up without too much. Trouble. Probably. <laughs> hey, Gorilla, what's going on, my friend? I'm growing ever concerned at all y'all's mental health by the moment. Yeah. But other than that, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> you should be worried. <sighs> you haven't seen your new costume for the next show. Mm. Ooh, I have thoughts. <laughs> and, and I'm going to beat this. And, like and a Greg, Greg's mic just got turned off. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm going to beat this like a dead horse because I really did dig that place up over in Florida at Bucky's. One time we went over there and they had someone in the beaver costume waving and shaking hands and just doing the Bucky whoa, beaver whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, and you didn't get a picture? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Fuck no. I got dig. Well, I had dignity. Had dignity. I had dignity, but... You yeah. take a fucking hit for the team. You on one side, tiny wife on the other, be like three stages of beaver. <laughs> That's okay. It's not the last time I'm going to be in Florida or Texas. And somewhere. I'll find... Yeah, I, I, I will man, seek out... I will seek see, out a We don't want to see Pop rolling you up in a wheelchair next to the beaver. We want to have you walk up there, put your arm around the beaver like a grown-ass man. <laughs> no? I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it, man. But you, but you could come all the way across the country on an airplane with a beaver sitting on your lap, but you couldn't hold... You do understand the beaver was not sitting on my lap for the duration of the flight. We don't believe you. We've seen pictures of him staring out the window with you. Yeah, right before we took off. And then after I did took that picture, I shoved the fucker in a bag and up he went in the overhead. Mm. Yeah. No disrespect, Bucky, but <laughs> yeah, there you go. But you travel third class. I'm pretty sure that if we were to a petition American Airlines, there would be a... Oh, no, 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 no. Delta. Delta. Not American. No. Uh. What you got against American Airlines? They're great. I mean, you know, they fly, they don't crash, they just land fucking late. Always. I'm pretty sure that there is a form on file with Delta Airlines for an emotional support beaver. Probably. (laughs) Never know. Yeah, well. Gorilla looks a little puzzled by his cigar over there. there. We didn't stick. (laughs) Hey, I didn't stick a. uh, uh, firecracker in that or anything. You sure, because there's a perfectly symmetrical black hole in the center of this cigar. All right, is your mic on? I'm sorry, I wasn't leaning close to it because I was uh, looking at my... There, there is go. a perfectly symmetrical black ho- dot in the middle of this cigar, and I don't know if that's a stem... Well, if it starts it's sparking, put it out. <laughs> Just tap it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I, I would think of much better ways to kill you. Probably much more entertaining uh, speaking too. Of, speaking of which, since uh, since the gorilla cigar is uh, going awry there, what uh, what are you smoking there, gorilla? I'm smoking uh, a Rocky Patel 55 that someone who shall remain nameless uh, gave me to smoke. Um, that someone's now looking at me awkwardly. Uh, no, uh, my dad gave this to me. It is uh, 
Rocky Patel, obviously, Nicaraguan rap, rapper, Costa Rica binder, and Nicaraguan filler, and I am enjoying it so far. This is your first one of those, huh? This is my first one of these, okay. yes. Good to Was know. It, and like like all Rocky Patel things, except one thing that I had at... Um, Stogies. Stogies. Uh, fabulous. Okay. Good, 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 good. Hey, Greg, are you smoking a Balmora? Oh, oh no, that's No, no, you fuck, I'm not. <laughs> What, wow. are you, what are you smoking, sir? So right now I have a cane, uh, or a cane, yeah, a nub, uh, Nicara- uh, nub Habano. That's what I'm smoking Jesus right now. Christ. That's I not tripped them up. Yes, yeah, you did that Balmoral thing. Hang on, That's hang not. On, hang. Can you hold both your arms up level for me? Make sure. Are you having a stroke? Do you... <laughs> you just said like seven different cigars there. For a <laughs> oh, but the one that I actually brought to smoke on the show is um, right here. It is an Asylum 13 Corojo. Uh, it's one that I actually found at um, the 2019 Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival when we went there the first year. Met the owner um, and partner of Christian Arroya, who owns the Asylum side of the equation. It is, um, Cigar was originally released in 2013. It is a Corojo, as we know, that's also one of my favorite um, leaves. It is... Um, Interesting because the internet is letting me down. But anyway, it says it is a Honduran wrapper, Honduran binder, Honduran filler, which doesn't make sense because it's a Corojo cigar. But uh, it's a lot of warm, spicy notes. It's uh, a solid medium cigar. And I would probably feel comfortable putting a newer cigar smoker into it, not a brand new person. Okay. You know, this is a Robusto. It's a 50 by 5. You know, I know it's your favorite size typically. And... Uh, it's just a, it, it's a good all around cigar. It could be my everyday. They are a little harder to find out here in California for some reason. This one I picked up in Idaho, which we'll discuss that a little bit later. Good deal. All right. How about you, Larry? What are you smoking? Um, I've got a Buffalo 10 Connecticut, uh, originally released in 2001. Uh, the original um, Buffalo 10s started getting quite a bit of uh, traction in 19 uh, because of some really good reviews and a fairly low price point. Uh, it comes in one size. It's a 6x50 box press Toro from the Dominican Republic. Um, five leaves combined of Central and South America, uh, Caribbean, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan Cameroon binder, and a Dominican filler. It's got that light brown um, Connecticut wrapper, super smooth, earthy, cedar, kind of red pepper, you know, smell and, and flavor when you're getting started. Uh, nice creamy woodsiness as you're smoking through it. It's a mild to medium. Right. Um, pushing medium is, is a little little iffy. This would be a good starter cigar for Yes, somebody. it is. Um now, I've got my, my glass of rye kind of hidden behind my coffee cup because this is more of a coffee or a you know lighter beer, a lager uh, type of cigar if you're wanting to have something to drink with it than, uh, than a rye or a scotch or a bourbon. But Scott was nice enough to bring his hogback rye, so I wasn't passing up on that. <laughs> um, you know, as, as you guys know, if you've listened, I'm not a huge box press guy. But um, this is a very well-constructed cigar, um, really nice flavor, and I can get I can kind of get into the box press a little bit with that because uh, it stays together really nice. This is actually the second one I've smoked of these today. I started out my morning with one, too, just to kind of, you know, so I had a little better, you know, understanding. This is actually the first two of these I've had. I've had other uh, Buffalo 10s before, but this is the first one of these Connecticut's. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, when we go to Rocky Mountain, I always pick up a bundle of both the Connecticut and the natural. So I know you've smoked the Maduro because they carry them at our local at Tobacco Republic. Uh-huh. But um, I'll have to get you a couple of naturals to try. I think you'll like those, too. Yeah, I haven't had the naturals. And, and for for whatever reason, uh, and I'm not sure, I know I bought some stuff from, from them, and I don't know which year it was I, at Rocky Mountain, but I had... Four of these separate in a little bag, so I'm I'm wondering. At, they were sampling that, five packs, um, and these were what they gave if uh-huh. you bought like four or five packs. Yeah. Or yes. something. Okay, that mm-hmm. makes sense now. 
Yeah, but, I think uh, I bought all three varieties when I was over at Rocky Mountain. I think I still have about four or five of them in my humidor. I mean, packets, not just four or I've five. I've probably of those. got natural somewhere then. It's just uh, wading through my humidor right now is a little difficult. I, I know you. I know where mine are. I'll get you a couple because I've right. got I bought a bundle each last time we were there and a bundle the time before. So I've got a crap load of them, frankly. I like them that much. Yeah, it's a great stick. I'm I'm real happy with it. And and, uh, and the Maduros, uh, the Maduros are are fairly smooth for a Maduro. You're getting you're getting flavor, not so much power on those. Um, and that's even something that I would put a newer smoker in, not a brand new, but it, you know that's one of those ones if you're wanting somebody to step up. You know, hey, I'd like to try a Maduro. Uh, this is a pretty good choice because yeah. it's not gonna you know it's not gonna put them down. And if I remember right, Larry, price points about eight or nine ninety five in California. Nine ninety five in California. When I made that comment earlier about them gaining traction in uh, nineteen because of the price point, everywhere else in free America, they're about five bucks. Six ninety five uh, in, in Idaho. Well, it, yeah, yeah, it, crazy. You know, yeah, that's you know anywhere else. If you're if you're in the five or six dollar range, phew, I'd smoke these all day every day. These are. These are great at that that price point, especially. Absolutely. What do you got there, Scott? All right, Mr. Robinson. Just know I despise you as you speak. As you should. Mm-hmm. I have a new mission in life. I'll be looking for <gasps> fucking... Ooh. What? Nothing. Go no, ahead. please, go ahead. Swing no, away, Larry. No, no. <laughs> I'm listening. Go on. Gainful employment? <laughs> I couldn't help it, man. I tried to shut it down. And we'll be right back. (laughs) Actually. (laughs) I'm sorry, man. I couldn't let that go. That's all right. I tried. That's all right. I I tried to pump the brakes, but we were already over the cliff. That's all right. I I probably somewhere in our travels, I had that coming. I would imagine. Yeah. Anyway, my new mission in life, aside from gainful employment, which, by the way, would be helpful in my secondary mission in life, is hunting down Balmorals. These things have been discontinued, I think, around 2020. Correct. STMG, the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, um, bought out the folks who create Balmoral, and you you can't find them. Nope. So when I was in Florida, went over to CI... And I was like, you know what? And I just had Balmoral on the brain, and I'm like, eh, let me go just look and see if they've got them. They had one last box just sitting there in the corner. So, yeah, I ran over to the counter. I was like, do you have any more of these? No. Crap. Because I would have bought all of them. No, and you should, and I would have chastised you if you didn't buy them. Yeah, as you should have. Well, this one in particular is the Balmoro Anejo XO. Um, comes in a Maduro wrapper and Robusto um, out of, if I remember correctly, or actually not remember because I'm looking straight at it, um, comes out of the Dominican Republic. Um, the cigar fillers from Brazil to DR and Nicaragua. And this is Maduro. This is a big boy cigar. Lots of spice. Um, as far as strength goes, yeah, it's pretty strong, but I think the strength really comes from the spice. That that does the job. So if you're not used to cigars, but chances are if someone's giving you a Balmoro, they really, really like you <laughs> because you don't just, you know, give these away to, you know. Yeah, they're trying to get in your pants, one or the other. So, so, <laughs> so Mr. Robinson, yes, we will need to do a Balmoro trade. One stick for one stick, because I still have some of the Balmoral duettos. Okay, you have my attention. So we'll have to get to that. Okay, mm-hmm. I like it. But it, it's a great brand. It's one that you and I got addicted to. Yeah. I hate to say this, but you can tell where we we learn a lot about some of our cigars. Remember when we went to the Balmoral booth at Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival, and we were both buying handfuls of boxes back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and you got that beautiful cutter that's here on the table, and just so happens to be a Balmoral cutter. That's just happy good fortune. Hey, didn't you used to have a lighter, Greg? <laughs> you know those assholes at TSA took it. Yeah. So yeah. yes, I did. <clears throat> so back to the Balmoral cigar. Not that I'm cigars. bitter or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I bid four White Owls. No. 
Sorry. <laughs> All right. No no sale. No, no. Habit Tampa? No. No. Garcia Vega? Ooh, I'll go five Garcia Vega. Damn, you guys are digging in the gutter on this one. No, Whoa. no, no, no. You're oh, wait, not, wait. No, I no, know, no, I know. No, no. How I'll about an entire 25-count box of grape swishers? Those are in 24-count. <laughs> oh, my, so sorry. My dog, because that way you can match them up with the Natty Ice. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Gorilla. Gorilla just shaking his head. He's like, I got to cut all this shit out. <laughs> Oh, well. Throw him an enrichment toy. He'll be okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The beaver's going back for a long pass. Here you go, gorilla. Gorilla's just nodding his head like hell with all you. Well, no, the beaver's holding on to my um, secondary cigar in case I get through this one before the end of the podcast. There was a method to my madness. That is not a display item. That avo, I will be smoking if I smoke down to the nub on this. That's a great stick, too, my friend. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Scotty, what are we drinking here tonight? Oh, our friends at Hogback, I decided, hell, I got nothing else to do but drink. <laughs> Not really. I, I'm being He's funny. He's been busy. I'm being funny. But um, our friends at Hogback, I picked up some of this when we were at Rocky Mountain. The Eclipse Rye Whiskey is finished in oak barrels. If you get the opportunity to get a bottle out of Hogback out of Colorado... Take that chance, brother. That yeah, is- any of their stuff you, you are not going to be disappointed in. Yeah. But if you're a rye fan, for sure, if you drink rye, then this uh, this rum barrel-aged uh, rye is a really, really nice drink. Yes, very, it is. Very nice. Very impressed with their product. And there's some great people up oh, there, yeah. Graham and Catherine. We appreciate you guys. And I'm looking I, forward to talking to them. They're coming down here in a month. They are, so, and right? I do believe um, we should set up a podcast for that night and have them on again. It's oh, not a problem. 100%. We could do that. 100%. Uh, you know what? Just uh, a technical deal. You see that we're kind of changing up the game a little bit on our setup, so we don't have the round table. We've got a nice little six foot here. We'll probably upgrade to eight foot, maybe, so we can all, like, comfortably fit, but this ain't bad. Well, we could all, with the right equipment, we'd comfortably fit on this one just fine. But my technical comment is either my cigar is doing the limbo or I'm doing the hurdle smoke in it because of this damn thing. Well, we'll figure that out. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to go to the table mics, 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. But, uh, you know, Larry, you missed it, Scott, because you were, you were not with us this weekend. But Larry and I and uh, Sherry and uh, a buddy of ours, Wes, uh, went on a little expedition with um, a former guest, you may remember, Zach, with Yard Dog Coffee and his wife. And we went up to the... Nevada County Sheriff's Deputies Association steak and shrimp feed over the weekend. That sounded good, <laughs> up man. Up in Grass Valley. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun time. Uh, the dude, the prawns they served were U15s, 15 prawns per pound. Wonderful, top yeah. quality seafood. The fellow that was barbecuing, his name was William. I want to say it's Bailey's Barbecue, but that might not be right. Because me being a dumb fuck left his business card on the table when we left, but hopefully Larry brought it one home. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Sherry's got one squirreled away somewhere. We will definitely get that to the gorilla, so that it's up on the site. Yeah, yeah. guy, guy was running the barbecue by himself. Oh yeah. Now for 500 the, people. Now there wasn't that many. Was it okay? Um, the uh, the people that were putting this event on had some had some people helping him out, but. By and large, he was running this big smoker by himself, and okay. his his tri tip was off the hook. It was amazing. It was great food, um, awesome event for a good cause. Um, tons of raffle prizes. Uh, I'm going to look at getting a table for that event next year. Yeah, um, maybe more than one, depending on how many people we want to go. They had gun raffles. They Shit, had I'll regular, fucking go. You- they had regular raffles. They had silent auction stuff. Um, yeah, it was it was a good time. You and, had me uh, a gun raffle. Well, so two of the guns they were raffling that the general public could get a hold of. There were some that were for table only, but the two that everyone could enter for was a nah, Rock Island 1911 and a I do not remember the manufacturer, Mos- but Mossberg it was 20 a Mossberg gauge. twenty gauge, uh, one by Larry's wife. Yes, Mos- Mossberg five hundred twenty gauge pump action. It's a great shotgun. That's what I have, but mine's twenty five years old. 
Nice. And a 12 gauge. But um, they also auctioned off something else that I kind of dodged a bullet on. Oh, that's right. He was so telling me about that. One of the things that they were auctioning off, which, uh, which I did bid on, um, was a 12 week old Labrador puppy. And before you PETA people get all freaking pissed off, you got the dog, you got the vet plan to take care of the dog, you got six weeks of puppy training, and you got six weeks of duck dog training. And that was the raffle prize. And, uh, I was four cards away from winning the puppy. That was a beautiful dog. <laughs> yes, Brad. it was. I've got a picture of him. I'll get it. I've got several pictures I've got to actually get to Gorilla this time to go up for these discussions. But, yeah, great-looking little dog, and he went to a good home. Yeah, they had uh, some of the raffle stuff they had. Um, the The local businesses, Grass Valley, Nevada County, really stepped up uh, to support their sheriff's association. There was a double barbecue uh, you know, propane charcoal combo smoker uh, that they raffled off. They had a Generac uh, portable generator. Holy crap! Um, some um, Ryobi uh, tools. Hunting trips, fishing yeah, trips. Yeah, uh, guided f- four person guided fishing trip. Wow. Guided duck hunting. Um, Seventy inch color TV. They had some great stuff. So if you're local to the uh, to the Sacramento, you know, Northern California area like we are, that would be something to look up. This is going to be a yearly event. It started last year, um, and th- th- it's a great program. They, yeah. they, they're using that uh, so that they can, you know, get uh, uh, sheriffs out in the community for community events, uh, you know, in the school, stuff like that. So, yeah, I was I was really looking looking forward to it, and we had a great time. Dude, I'm all over that. Yeah, it was yeah, a it lot was, of fun. It was a ton of fun. Don't we have a crab feed coming up? We have a crab feed coming up next weekend, I yep, believe. That's right. And I honestly, that was set up by our wives, and I honestly have no idea where it is, what it is for. I Yeah, it was kind of like with my wife. It's like, we're going no to idea. a crab feed. Okay. You think Pop wants to go? Yeah, we'll find out. He didn't. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those things where you come and tell me there's an event that's serving all-you-can-eat food. Dude, I'm 285 pounds. I ate 70 shrimp. And I know that because I counted the tails. Mm-hmm. Out, Damn, I'm an asshole. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> All you can eat food and you can win a gun? Okay. Yeah, no, it was uh it was fairly fabulous. And they had some good booze. Um yeah, they uh they were pouring two different beers from um uh Grass Valley Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. They had uh, a couple of wines that the, you could do. The wine was, uh, they had a Bogle Red and a Bogle White. Both of those are local. Uh, Bogles in Placerville and our, our lovely um, gold country wine country that we have up here. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty awesome event. Um, it was sponsored by uh, by Roots um, Real Estate. They're a, uh, they're a Keller Williams affiliate here in the area. Um Great people there, too, and they did a ton of work to help put this event on, and it was just, uh, it was just awesome. I mean, right I, was, I, was, I was blown away by how, uh, how cool it was and how smooth everything went, and, and yeah, it was just a great time. Mm-hmm. All right. And then, of course, we take a non-fish eater to the event. Sorry, Wes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Wes, yeah. It, he don't eat shrimp. He don't eat salad. He don't eat shrimp. So he sat there by, you know, kind of looking goofy. While we freaking stuffed oh, yeah. ourselves. We're eating shrimp like it's, you know, like it's our last meal before the hanging, right? And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and Wes is just like, well, maybe the steak will come out pretty soon. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like, man. And like, then when it did come out, he was like sitting next to a Hoover. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. He was plowing that stuff down three forkfuls at a time. So it was, <laughs> oh, man. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Good food and a good time. Oh, so, hey, so so we're driving home, right? It was foggy as shit, remember? Oh, yeah. So here Wes and I get in the truck. We fire up the truck, light a couple cigars to smoke on the way home because you can't smoke inside. And uh, I looked at Wes, and I'm like, you know, we got to be really careful going down this mountain because with the weather, the freaking deer are going to be moving around. Sure as shit, maybe six miles outside of Grass Valley, I see movement in my peripheral on the right-hand side of the truck, and this doe turns around just in time to miss the right front quarter panel bumper of my truck. And Wes is like, well, that was close. I'm glad you didn't hit it. And I'm like, why? So wait, you almost tell, you telling me you almost killed a deer? I almost finally? killed a deer. And I told Wes, I looked at him, I said, had we hit that thing, 
you would have gotten out, got your knife, taken that thing out so it would have been completely dead, thrown it in the back of the truck, and then we would have got the hell out of here. You could have taken your concealed carry, shot it in the head, and... Uh, I was drinking. Oh, never mind. Oh, they had white wine. Okay, They yeah, had red drinking. wine, asshole. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the... Uh, that's how you know that the snow line is down way low yeah, here yeah. where we live. Well, somebody hit a freshie maybe another 10 miles down the road, maybe half an hour before we went through that. I had six cross the lower part of my driveway coming home the other night. Holy. One after another. Wow. Yeah, the snow's like, deep I'm, then. I'm, I'm 16 years in there. I've never seen six. Uh, the most I've ever seen is four, and usually that's a, you know, two, a doe. And uh, triplets, and yeah, yeah, maybe a, for a while we had a, a buck and a doe, and then two fawn with it. But I, yeah, I've never seen six, and these were all decent sized deer coming across my driveway. I'm like, oh, there goes another one. Oh, wait, it's like a deer parade and shit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy. Well, speaking of travel and such, Greg, uh, you did a little field trip over the past weekend, so uh, talk to me. I did. I went to the land of free America. So um, as most of you listeners may or may not know, one of our our biggest fans, uh, Tommy, his wife passed away from a quick and uh, fairly fierce battle with cancer um, in February. So I decided, you know, I need to go up and see him and hang out. And it just so happens that my visit to him coincided with an event at my favorite cigar shop outside of the state of California, The Vault. Josh and Lori and his staff uh, were very kind to have me up there as Cavalier was there with our good friend Brian Matola. He oh, sends, nice. his, sends his best to both of you. Right on. You know, uh, we went through smoking some great sticks. Um, let me get my picture out. But, you know, it's a lot different. You know, one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, with, with Tommy losing his wife, what was amazing to me is the culture um, and I know we've talked a little bit about this on previous shows, but the culture that goes around with um, cigars, um, everybody was checking in on him. You know, they check on him almost daily by phone. Everybody's giving him a hug, making sure he's okay when he's at the lounge, taking him out for meals. It's just a, such an interesting culture to watch how brothers and sisters of the Leaf take care of each other. And, you know, more particularly in a state like that. So in my travels, I posted some pictures, which if you follow us on Facebook, you saw uh, one cigar, <coughs> excuse me, uh, was the first time for me. You've heard us talk about the 1502 brand. Someone saved me for a minute. Oh, the 1502 <laughs> brand, which we've seen. Um, I've seen pictures and they do stock them over at the vault which is why I need to make my way over there because I want to pick up, you know, a couple we, of boxes. We definitely do. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm-hmm. So I was able, you know, we um, we had a little herf <coughs> February last year with Enrique Sanchez and then saw him at uh, PCA. And uh, he was talking about his flagship, which is his XO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I okay. finally got to smoke that cigar. It does come at a $28 price point. And everybody's going to go, oh, my God. Forget the price, people. The at least 10-year-old tobacco that, no, I'm sorry, the 18-year-old tobacco that he's using in that cigar gives it such a beautiful floral note with pepper and and spice, almost like a Chinese five spice behind it. And it was a really enjoyable torpedo Probably a Toro. Um, lovely stick. There'll be pictures posted on the web. Then I smoked several others in that line. Um, I also smoked the new uh, Cavalier uh, USA Regional Exclusive. It's uh, a lovely cigar. I should have done a little bit more research before the show and prepped on what it was. But it's um, Matola was telling me that they take the different blends, um, tweak them depending on the region that they're going to. So in this case, this was tweaked tweaked for the American palate. It is the same cigar that is tweaked for the European palate, for the German palate, for the Scandinavian palate, for the the Caribbean palate, depending on where it's going. It is going to be a yearly thing. It's one of those that they've really made special. Now, you touch upon something, um, adapting a cigar to a certain region's palate, which sounds kind of weird to me because... You know, you give me something and say, well, this is for the American palate. It's like, yeah, that's nice, but I want to try out the Scandinavian and the German palate. 
I, it's just, you know, it seems odd. I'm not saying good or bad, just odd that you do it in that fashion, fashion it towards your particular market where it's selling. I, I don't give a fuck where it's from. Just put the cigar out and let me be the judge. I, I, I do. I understand and I agree. I think a lot of it has to do with, if you think about it, various regions of the world when we're, if you think about like the three of us, okay, typically I'm not drinking, but I prefer a red wine or a little bit of scotch with my cigar. The alcohol choices and the food choices change based on the country. So it does make sense to blend a little bit toward making it pair well with where it's going. No, that makes sense. Now, question mm -hmm. from a marketing standpoint that I, that I look at things, is it branded, labeled, boxed differently? Yes. Okay. Has he given any thought to a sampler of one or two of each of those right. that we could check out around it, it's, the world? It's funny, it's funny you say that. The answer, and I hope I can give this away, is yes, that is in the works. Thank you. Okay, that's something I would dig. And, you know, we'll be able to get a hold of them because they'll... they'll. That's one know. of those things where we could do multiple recordings that strung together of us smoking each one of those and and see right. if we can pick up the differences from uh, the American palate version to the German to the whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that I want to try. Yeah, out. that would be fun. They are coming, so I'll make sure. I'm going to see Brian again um, in April. He's going to be back at the vault, and I'm heading already planning my trips uh, trip to go back up there. Are you driving or flying? Uh we can drive if you want to join me on that trip. Not a big you. deal. I mean, it's like at this point, I ain't got shit to do. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I smoked another one, Cavalier. This is one day, folks, one day. So, I also smoked the Cavalier Inner Circle. As we know, we all love that stick. Oh, I was about a third. I'm about the third, last third of the box, and I'm smoking them sparingly. Well, you know, we'll be I'm able out. to get we'll be able to get some in April. I'm um, out. So <laughs> you're out. He didn't have any more. I smoked all those in. Oh, circle. shit. Yeah. Yeah, when it started getting down low, I was like, okay, I got to slow down on these. I got to smoke some paper boys or, you know. Well, I thought I had. I, Perdomos. I thought I had them split up in my humidor. No, you did And didn't. I'm like, no, I did. I Because I some of that stuff, I, I like halved them, you know, so that they would, I could get them in and they'd store a little better. And apparently that was that wasn't one of them. I'm powered through those things. Like, yeah, I got eight oh, more shit. on the other yeah. side. Negative, Ghost Rider. I smoked all those sons of bitches. Well, it's funny. I was going through my humidor the other day, and I looked. I said, I got a whole box of Andalusian bulls. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit. Then I looked back further. I'm like, oh, I got some 2012s. You don't remember buying those? I do. The barber poles? Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. still back mm -hmm. there just... Chilling out of the top cabinet is just funny when you start looking through your humidor and discovering, like, wait, I got this? And then I got, like, a fuck ton of Perdomos, because those are awesome. Mm -hmm. The 20th anniversary kicks ass, but I still, my love and my origin is that 10-year champagne. That's a great that's stick. A, yeah. that's I, I honestly, I think I kind of lean towards the 20-year uh, the a little more than the champagne. Yeah. But... Both of those are fantastic cigars. Well, it's more like going back to my roots. I truly enjoyed a 20-year, but a piece of advice I would give the folks listening out there who are going to be at um, the Big Smoke over in Rocky Mountain. Or not Big Rocky Smoke, Mountain Rocky Cigar Mountain. Festival. Thank you. The Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival. Um, advice to the vendors, bring your shit. Because I remember, I think it was Perdomo, they had, um, you just know. Just samples. They just, just had samples, samples no boxes. And I was sitting there going, I walked over there like, here's my money. Do you have boxes? No, we don't. It's like, I have money. <laughs> yep. It's crazy. No, that was, that was, I was like, wow. Because I kind of saved storage space, <laughs> packing space for a couple of boxes of Perdomos. Yeah. That just didn't work out. But it's funny, Florida, like I said, I mean, the cigar um, shops I went into, Perdomo was really Well, yeah, that's dominant. where they're based, too. Right. So that kind of makes sense. So it's easy for them to stock. It's just like, you know, coming out of California, it's just like, 
holy crap, there's more than like, you know, four different or five or six different boxes. They've got like an entire shelf, just nothing but Perdomo. And I'm like, holy shit, we have arrived. Well, and you know what was funny too is so this tells you, you know, you guys know the atmosphere of TR. So with on regards to what exactly though? When you the say way that. we joke around and screw with people. Oh yeah. Okay. So on Saturday, um, so the event was Friday night. On Saturday, we went back to the vault for another round. Because um, what else are you going to do in Idaho in the winter time? It's cold. So uh, one of the fellows that I met there, his name is Will. Uh, Will. I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget. It is Will Brown. Um, he's a retired Californian that moved to the free state and a really wonderful dude, gave me some great ideas on, on stuff for the show and things like that. But one of the things that happened that was kind of funny, which is exactly what the three of us would have done in the same situation, dude forgets his wallet. So what do we do? We start taking pictures of a bottle of Whistle Pig, I believe was what it was, at $145 a shot. Yikes. The bartender, because the vault has a full bar, full liquor license, the bartender took iced tea and Coke to get and mixed it together to get the right color, poured out five of those shots, and we have pictures of us toasting Will, sending pictures to him of thanks for the shots at $145 a piece. <laughs> But see, the beauty is that's at every cigar lounge that you go to. I yes. would say 90% of the cigar lounges, like when I, and I'm going to shout out to Island Girls Cigar Lounge over in um, Fleming Island, um, Florida. Uh, ladies, I do intend to send you what I told you I was going to send you. I just ordered a picture, so we will give you an autographed picture of the three of us along with a Beyond the Humidor sign. So that Su will be suitable coming. for hanging. Yes, suitable for <laughs> hanging. So, you know, enjoy. I have not forgot about you ladies. But it was great because when I was there, you know, just kicking back smoking, you know, just, you know, up to the bar because it had like a full bar too. Just minding my business and just, talk, you know, talking to cats here and there. And then when they found out about the show, you know, folks were like, hey, I listened to that. And other people were like, hey, you know, wh where are you guys at? And we're all talking and they're just like, come move out here. Do the show out here. There we go. It's like. I have found my people. And one of the funny things in Florida, when I tell them about the gun laws in California, they look at me like I'm from another planet because I'm pretty much am. They're like, wait a minute, you got to get a permit for ammo? Every time you buy ammo, you've got to pay a dollar for a background check. Floridians are looking at me like, what? Huh? My best friend. We've known each other since we were in junior high. Um, we hooked up because he lives over in um, Tampa, outside Tampa in Lutz. And he just has a good time with talking to cats saying, oh, yeah, my boy's out from California. He's like, you lying. What do you mean a background check for ammo? I said, yep. I said, and I've got a concealed carry permit. He's like, no. I said, yep. Still need a background check. Still need a background check and pay California their dollar. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to free America. I know. I, I went to a gun store in Florida and just freaking cried. They should have been playing Adagio for strings because I'm like looking like Charlie Sheen at the end of Platoon and the cop there, like tears coming out of my eyes and shit. Because I'm like, wait, that's an FNP-90. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, that, that's a AR-15 with no fucked up sissy ass er anti-ergonomic shit. Tell us how you really feel. Don't, oh, I can tell you how hey, I really hey, you know, ah, ah, ah. You know what was amazing to me is going through, we went to Sportsman's Warehouse to look around. And, of course, I can't buy anything because my ID is wrong. To have yep. ammo on the shelf, plenty of it, and no glass. You grab what you want and walk to the fucking register. America, America. You know, if you could actually light. squeeze out a tear, it'd be convincing. On the Should come with a We the People bumper sticker. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that it's either going to be Nevada or Florida for us when we retire. Wow. Old people central. Well, you technically yeah. have retired. You just want to work more. Let's color it forced retirement. Speaking of, I've got to figure out the date for you guys to save the date to come to my forced retirement party. <laughs> I got to talk to my former boss because basically because I am considered retired, quote unquote, 
um, I get a stipend Oops. for a party. <laughs> Paradise Science, can we help you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get a stipend for a party, so I got about 500 bucks coming to me. I'm going to see if I can do it in a fashion where I can just say, okay, I want to run to Costco, and I'm getting meat. And basically, my retirement party is going to be me barbecuing. I'm good with it. Your yep. food's amazing. Yeah. Ribs. Yeah, I'm all in. It's a fat guy's wet dream. Ribs, pork bellies. Hey, man. hey get your own saying. <laughs> damn it. Yours are the best. Oh, I can't argue that lot. Maybe some collard greens and, of course, crack. You're going to drive around looking for greens? Wait, 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 wait. Let's specify when you say crack. Let's specify that to our audience. Y'all know what crack is. They don't. Well, they don't. All they, all they are is looking all, on YouTube seeing thinking. a black guy saying crack. <laughs> <laughs> all they're thinking is you're becoming the black Walter White and you're going to start cooking in your garage. That's all they're... <laughs> all right, Gorilla, you could be Jesse. <laughs> Science! Yeah, fucking magnets, bitch! <laughs> wow. Scott makes... He's like two Jessies. Yeah. So Scott's version of crack for the rest of you <laughs> is he makes homemade Parker House rolls from scratch, and they are the bomb. They are right. <laughs> Larry, you only get one. Hey. You'll be like, what? what? That's all right, man. I crowd my way to the front. <laughs> Scott says the food's ready, and before his mouth closes from saying ready, the fat kid is already waddled up to the front with a plate. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Robinson. Can I have some seconds? You haven't even had first yet. Don't worry. I've got a plan, damn it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but I'm thinking a good time is going to be had by all at that event. So yep. I just got to set the date up, call my former boss, and tell him what I plan to do. So it's another one of those uh, barbecues where it's bread, not thumb. Bread, Ooh. not thumb. <laughs> Somebody's too drunk to eat. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. Memories <sighs> of that 4th of July. How many years ago was that? Like that was 2019. Yeah, that was. That uh, was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like 17 or 18 or 19. something. 19. 19? Uh, 19? Yeah, right before COVID. Okay. Yeah, the combination jungle juice, lemon, cello, and fucking Ooh. whatever scotch someone brought. That was a... That was a game changer right Ooh. there, baby. Well, including my full bar. That wasn't even including the full bar that was um Yeah, that we, were, that we were trolling through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the jungle juice you couldn't taste the alcohol in, fo followed by lemon cello. That was a poor decision for some people. And then there wasn't there some moonshine too. Oh yeah, there oh, was yeah, there was a, that was what it was. Apple pie moonshine. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. sweet Jesus. Yeah, well, yep. but hey, I so, wasn't drunk for it. That was New go. Year's of nineteen, nineteen twenty. So Larry, you got that funny thing on the end of the table there. Yep, I got this uh, back in November. When I got my new truck, I started looking around for a portable air filter for a vehicle. Now, you know, if you guys have listened to the program before, you know we've reviewed the Rabbit Air, mm -hmm. and all three of us, four of us, think that is a fabulous product, and it absolutely is uh, for a, you know, small to medium-sized room in a house. Mm -hmm. This Colada air filter is about the size of a water bottle. It is USB uh, rechargeable, so it's not plugged into anything right now, and it's running. Um, but you plug it into the USB port on your vehicle. It also has a um, LED light so that uh, it will uh, get rid of microbials that way. But it will clear 100 square feet in 10 minutes. That's amazing. Um, and okay. the best way I can describe this is... When I first got this thing, the very next day, Sherry and I were going about a 45-minute drive uh, up the hill to Grass Valley for a event. And I got in the truck, turned this thing on. It was, uh, it was uh, cold and rainy, and I drove the entire 45 minutes with the windows up in my truck, smoking a cigar, and it didn't even phase her. Wow. Now, I've also taken this when we go out camping. Uh, we have a 19-foot travel trailer, and I've used it in that travel trailer. And my wife doesn't smoke, but she, cigar smoking doesn't bother her, per se. 
but uh, yeah, she is she is as impressed as I am with this thing uh, about how well it works. I Super was quiet. Just about to ask you, are there replacement filters you can get for it? Yeah, uh, I, I just found them. Yeah, you can. Um, there's uh, so there's two different types of filters in this thing. There's a HEPA filter, um, and then there's like a carbon filter. So yeah, both of those are replacement. Um, you can get them right off of Amazon. The unit itself is right around fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the filters, if you buy both of them together, they're about sixteen or seventeen dollars, depending on where you get them. Um, but yeah, I am super happy with this thing. It works great. Uh, I smoke in my truck no matter what, and I never had any kind of filter system. Mm-hmm. Um, before you know, I just open a window. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if you're thinking you want to smoke in a vehicle or, you know, even in a, in a small, you know, area of your house, you have a tiny office or something, this thing works great, man. Well, you know, I'm looking at Amazon right now and they, it looks like they've got a different model. Cause I see on that one, you've got that opening, like mm-hmm. less than a third of the way through. But they don't sell that one. But this one's thirty nine okay. off of Amazon. This is the EL three. All right, let's check that. I out. think that one might be the EL two right there. So, um, yeah, for I mean, for a fifty dollar investment, that's not uh, bad. I'll at try. All. You know, I'll try. And I, I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Um, this actually wasn't my first choice. When I was doing research on Amazon, Mm -hmm. the one that I liked a little, I thought a little bit better reading about it uh, based on the reviews and, you know, how much air would move and stuff like that Mm -hmm. was out of stock and there was no no, uh, estimated time of arrival if you tried to order it. So I was like, yeah, no. Uh Uh-oh, look at him. Look at him go. Look at Greg on the oh, phone. Wow. It's not, it's not that same brand, but it's the same design. Oh. All right. But yeah, I'm I'm real happy with this, you know, and if uh free delivery tomorrow with a nine dollar coupon. Mm. You go. Bye now. Man. Is that oh yeah, that's the one. What's the brand on it? I'm just gonna why don't I just order two? You could do that too. What colors do they have? It's blue. Uh they don't have a purple? Jesus. Or a silver? Blue, matte black, blue. That's what you're getting. <laughs> we have vinyl. Yeah. Yes, we do. We'll wrap that son of a bitch in gold chartreuse, my brother. Merlot. No, oh, it's uh, hickory bronze. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, like be the here, they'll, new they'll be here tomorrow. God well, bless you, sir. Well, all right. That was easy. I like it. A little something extra in my envelope. Yeah, I'm sure that the uh, viewing and listening people love the fact that he's giving a review and we're sitting there ordering Buying it. Yeah, take my money. If that doesn't tell you you need to buy one, I don't know what does. Exactly. But that's the whole thing, too, is I know for a fact it works because I've ridden in your old work truck versus and your new work truck, and it's like, it's an amazing that that little thing, and you can't even tell that you smoke in your truck. Yeah. Now, I've had two different people get in my truck and go, you smoke in here? I'm like, every day. Because if you know my Volkswagen, oh, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, I kind of smoke every now and then in mine, and I get the, you smoked in your car? Yeah, today I just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and it it helps if you, you know, do a regular cleaning. And, and yeah. you know, mm-hmm. uh, if your car is filthy, there's not a whole lot, you know, that's going to help that. But, uh, you know, by and large, I I'm super happy with this thing. Now, I've got, uh, because of the continuous rainy weather we've got around here, uh, I need to get the inside of my truck cleaned, you know. Yeah. Amen. But, um, Same here. You know, that would have happened regardless. So, no, I'm real super happy with this product. Oh, nice, nice. Well, yeah, where are we at, man? At what, that uh, one. Gorilla, how's that, uh, how's that Patel treating you? It's going pretty good. I was kind of hoping for it to get, I don't know what adjective I want to use, darker, like richer a little bit. It yeah. stayed kind of light. I was expecting just based on the color of the wrapper for it to be a little. Yeah, that's that's kind of deceiving on that one, huh? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, there's not really a, a sm- punch or a power. It smokes really a lot like a Connecticut. I thought it was going to be not Maduro, but 
just something a little more, a little darker, a little, little richer flavor. I want to say an earthy or chocolatey are the words I want to use, but that's not quite what I mean. Just yeah, no, I darker, get you. I guess would be I get the best you. way I could describe, it. but still really good. All right, there. Well, there's a couple more of those in your future if you're interested. Oh, God bless. How about you, Larry? How's yours? Um, this is. I really enjoyed this. You know, like I said, this is my second one today, and uh, just it burns really well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a really good draw. Sometimes for a box press, I find that they're a little tighter. You know, as far as the draw than I like, but uh, no, this is this has been a great stick. Both of these today. Uh, I'll I'll dig through the humidor and and see about pulling those a little closer to the front. Get uh, get them a little farther in the rotation. So there you go. Um, everybody can pretty much predict what I'm going to say about this on a scale of one to take your ass to Flavor Country. I'm all up in Flavor Country on this Balmoral. This is wonderful. Um, as I smoke it and it gets down to the nub and it's not even near the nub yet, it just it smokes real well. You know that's a tribute to how well constructed these Balmorals are. And it's a pity that we don't have them anymore. Yeah, much like many others you know you, you the lines disappear and yeah that's one of the problematic things and good things i think about cigars is that the good ones will come and go yes but there's always going to be something out there to replace it and it should be good um you know S, uh, scandinavian tobacco group just acquired another brand too yeah i just can't remember who it was alec bradley oh okay that's right so that uh we'll see what happens with that Wow, but yeah, they're be uh, interesting. They're the European powerhouse right now, and they're living up to their form. They're acquiring a lot of stuff. Yeah, the only bad news about that is they're going to start eking out certain um, boutique brands. It could be. It could be. You know, as an effort for cost savings, I'm just assuming here. And you know, one of the things that I'm very interested to see is, uh, as you know, we're in March. In about six months, the premium. Uh, Cigar Association trade show will happen in Las Vegas. And they have partnered with the Boutique Cigar Association, and they're going to have a boutique um, grotto, if you will. I can't remember what the other the term they're calling it. But but uh, boutique brands that are not typically seen at PCA will be there this year in their section. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got in there, and I'm waiting for the list to come out. It's pretty cool. Um, so we can get some notices out to get some time to talk to people. Yeah, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. Good deal. Very nice. Well, we ready to uh ready to shoot this thing in the foot? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still just kicking back, relaxing and enjoying uh, and uh, such. I'll pet the beaver. So <laughs> He's right there in front of you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, why? Bada boom, bada bing. Why? I'm in, I'm out, I'm sleeping. <sighs> hey gorilla, bring me home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Looks like my rye glass is getting empty, and I'm going to get fairly close to the nub, so I think it's about that oh. time. <laughs> Sorry, man. I had an itch. <laughs> God damn it. It's a good thing that this just fully goes on. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Oh. <laughs> it's not like you owe me money. It's like one of those mob tropes where it's just like, I'm sorry. I'll pay you tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Alright, uh, we gotta play that back. Did that hit him? Yes, it uh, did. Oh god. All I felt was it hit my elbow and I look over and the mic's coming back down away from your face. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. Why? <laughs> so roll us out here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> shout out to the audience and on behalf of all of us here, Greg, Larry, the gorilla, and myself, thank you for listening. Don't forget Bucky. Oh, yeah, and Bucky the Beaver, our permanent resident, our mascot, no less. Check us out at LumaCigarCartel.com. Like and share us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Don't be a stranger. Drop us a line and let us know you guys are out there. I'm Scott Robinson, and again, on behalf of all of us here, we look forward to chatting with you in the next episode. But until then, take care and good smoke, good drink. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla can't take it. I've never heard this part of the song. <laughs> Break it down on the keyboard. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. Have a good night, everybody. Good smoke, good drink, and good life, baby. <laughs> Woo! 
need more alcohol. <laughs>